Hello and welcome to The Postcard Professor, where we take complex ideas and explain them in the space of a postcard. In this video, we're going to be looking at linear interpolation. Now, the reason we need linear interpolation is because we run into situations where we have a table of values. We might have a table of values relating x and y. So x can be 10, 20, 30. y is going to be 22, 25, and 18. Now, the question we're trying to answer is, what is y if our x value is in between one of these points? Let's say that x is equal to 27. In that case, we can reasonably expect that y is going to be in between 18 and 25, but the exact value is kind of a guess. Well, linear interpolation tells us exactly how to make that guess. And we are allowing error into our calculations here, but we can systematically come up with a value. So let's graph this out and just try to draw a picture of what we're going to be doing. So we have three x values, which I'm going to call x1, x2, and x3. And then those three x values are related with three y values. And for our little example, we are trying to figure out what was happening at x equals 27. So I'm going to label that xm, just meaning it's a middle point of x. All right, linear interpolation like the name suggests, uses a line to figure out what that xm value is going to end up being, or rather the ym value. This line is going to be defined as it often is, just y is equal to mx plus b, but we're going to have ym as the point on that line where x is equal to xm. And so that's just the y value at that middle point. Now the question is, how do we figure out what m and b are for this line? Well, we know that this line intersects two points. It intersects x2, y2, and x3, y3. So what that does for us is it gives us two equations that we can use to solve for m and b. So we now have two equations with two unknowns, m and b. We can solve this a number of different ways. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this first equation and solve it for b. And then I'm going to do something a little tricky in order to solve for m. I'm going to multiply our first equation by negative 1. And then I'm going to add our second equation. And so what that gives us is y3 minus y2 is equal to m times x3 minus x2. And then our b's just fall off because one of these is positive, the other is negative. And so I can divide through by this x3 minus x2 to end up with m is equal to y3 minus y2 over x3 minus x2. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug these into our equation over here. Uh, at first, I'm going to leave that m alone. We'll deal with that later. It's just a lot of writing and it gets confusing. Uh, so we're just going to leave that b and plug in our b value. So doing that, we end up with y is equal to mx plus, and then we plug in our b value here. This is y2 minus mx2. Now I'm going to subtract this y2 over, and then I'm going to use the distributive rule to uh, group together this x and x2. And so what we end up from there is y minus y2 is equal to m times x minus x2. Okay, so again, we're going to divide over this x minus x2. So we have y minus y2 over x minus x2, and that's equal to m. But then we know that m is equal to this chunk here. And so this is going to be equal to y3 minus y2 over x3 minus x2. Okay, now let's name these. So this is a difference. Uh, we can often refer to differences as deltas. So I'm going to call this delta y, and then just to give it a further name, I'm going to call it delta y a. And then keeping this one similar, I'm going to call this one delta x a. And then for these two, this is another delta y. So I'm going to call it delta y b, and this will be delta x 
B. So we can rewrite this using these new names, and we end up with delta YA over delta XA is going to be equal to delta YB over delta XB. Now this is perfectly serviceable, but I actually prefer a slightly different grouping. So what we can do is we can divide both sides by this delta YB to move it down here. And we can multiply both sides by this delta XA to move it up here. And so what we end up with from that is delta YA divided by delta YB is equal to delta XA divided by delta XB. And the reason I like this grouping a little bit better is because we get these ratios with like values. So in a little bit, we're actually going to end up having units with these numbers. But if we're looking at ratios, then we don't have to worry as much about what those units are as long as the units are the same for these deltas. Okay, that being said, let's come back to our example up here. Let's say, for instance, that we are going to be looking for y when x is equal to 13. So we're setting our x sub m equal to 13, and we want to know what y sub m is. If we take our plot up here, our x sub m is going to be uh, somewhere around here, and we'll figure out what the y value is by drawing a line in between these two points. So we'll make that line and shoot that up, and this will be our y sub m value. Okay, so as before, we're gonna use this equation. Now our delta y sub a, before we had it as y minus y2, but in this case, we're finding a point in between one and two. So we actually want our y a to be this distance here. And so delta y a is y m minus y1. Now, delta y b, before it was y3 minus y2. Now it's going to be y2 minus y1, again, because the point we're looking for is in between those two points. So our delta yb is here. All right, now let's look for our delta x values. So again, we want it to be in between these two points. So our delta xa will be here. So this is xm minus x1, and our delta xb is going to be x2 minus x1. And that can be drawn here. So our delta b's are always going to be in between the full range that we can get from the table. The delta a's are always going to link the midpoint with the first point over here. So putting this all together, the only unknown is this delta ym. So we have to leave that one alone, but we get ym minus y1, and y1 was 22, divided by yb. This is y2 minus y1. We know both of those values. So that's 25 minus 22. That gets us 3. And that's going to be equal to xm minus x1. So that's this 13 value minus 10. So that's 3 again. And that's divided by x2 minus x1, which is 10. So from this we can say that ym is equal to, so we're multiplying both sides by three to get rid of that, and then adding the 22. And so we get 22 plus nine tenths, or ym is equal to 22.9. And this is our final answer. So when x is equal to 13, we get that y is equal to 22.9. So this is a method that we can use in order to get data from intermediate points in tables. In any case, I hope this was helpful, and I will catch you next time.